Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Michelle Ainelli. Muy buenas tardes a todos. My name is Denise Quintanilla. We'd like to start today with a simple question. What courses make up the humanities? The humanities courses include history, foreign languages, philosophy, anthropology, literature, music, and the arts. As humanities majors decrease, STEM majors increase. With these STEM majors on the rise, a lot of students ask themselves, why does my major require humanities courses? Although STEM majors graduate with an impressive degree of knowledge, in the absence of the humanities, they may become imperceptive, uncultured, and or poor communicators. These fields of study provide students with cultural understanding, critical thinking skills, and enhanced communicative abilities. With vast amounts of information in a data-driven world, we need the subsequent ability to be able to communicate complicated analytics in a thorough manner. David Steiner, professor of education at John Hopkins University, and Mark Bauerlang, professor of English at Emory University, said it best. It is, to show students new worlds, confront them with the sublime and the strange, sharpen their taste for beauty, refine their moral compass, and deepen their judgment. In short, to invite them into an examined life. Living an examined life encourages us to learn from the past, analyze thoughtfully, apply knowledge creatively, and the ability to communicate it to others. Today we will demonstrate exactly that, with examples of foreign literature, music, and art. To begin, we chose a sample of literature from Nobel Prize winning poet, Pablo Neruda, which depicts a time of political unrest in Chile. This excerpt from the poem, No Me Lo Pidan, sheds light on Chile's complicated political history and the toll it took on the population. Neruda, having watched his country suffer at the peril of a greedy and corrupt government, took it upon himself to climb various levels of governmental branches to ensure positive social change for his people. He believes, as human beings alone, that we have an obligation to fix what is broken. The excerpt from this poem translates, I am only a man of flesh and bone, and for that reason, if they try to strike my brother with whatever I have at hand, I will defend him. And every one of my lines carries a peril of gunpowder or iron that will fall upon the inhumane, the cruel, the arrogant. But the punishment of my furious peace does not menace the poor, nor the good. With my lamp, I look for those who have fallen. I tend their wounds and heal them. And these are the duties of the poet, the pilot, and the stonemason. We are obligated to do something on this earth because on this planet we were birthed, and we must fix the things of man because we are not birds nor dogs. These words are just as powerful today as they were in 1960. However, unfortunately, 13 years after this publication, on September the 11th, 1973, the country fell into the hands of Augusto Pinochet, who would be known for one of the bloodiest regimes in Latin American history. Beginning with banning all left-leaning political parties, Neruda foresaw a sickening future. Pablo Neruda died on September 23rd, 1973, just 12 days after the military push. Some believe he died of a broken heart. His death, profound as his words, sparked the beginning of a revolution against Pinochet that would carry until his eventual demise in 1988. Next, we move on to the analyzation of the song Cantares, performed by Spanish musician Juan Manuel Serral. Influenced by many poets, this song is based on a poem by Antonio Machado, a poet who practiced what he called eternal poetry, which was informed more by intuition rather than by intellect. This style is most obvious in these lines. Well, what you would have heard translated <laughs> is, when the goldfinch cannot sing, when the poet is a pilgrim, when praying gives us no use, walker, there is no path, the path is made by walking, stroke by stroke, verse by verse. Intuition and the ability to trust yourself as you grow perfectly exemplifies Machado's idea of eternal poetry. Through Surratt's appreciation for Machado, he carries the torch signifying the importance of self-reflection for personal growth. Could you click to the next slide, please? <laughs> Fantastic. Continuing on to the arts, everyone knows the phrase, a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, that is exactly what art does. Art is a way to creatively express oneself, thus enriching the human experience. The artwork by Frida Kahlo and the Me Too exhibit here at Mammoth sheds light on the issue of feminism in such a way that only art can. 
Frida Kahlo's artwork is defined by her pain and suffering. As you can see, she has nails all over her body and face. A column is put in place of her spine, which seems to almost be collapsing. However, her facial features show the opposite. She may be in pain and hurting, but she looks strong and triumphant. Through these kinds of artworks, we're able to appreciate other cultures. We live in a very self-absorbed society, but art can help us become aware of other people's experiences and struggles, especially those of women. This sculpture, titled Lock Her Up at the Me Too exhibit, depicts the feeling that a woman's body belongs to the rest of society before herself, thus only giving her limitations. The torment and twist of the body shows anguish and anger. Without her head, she has no control over her mind, nor the ability to be heard. These two art pieces are 74 years apart, but it shows the power art still has in society. It demonstrates that we are still fighting the same issues and how art can help bridge that gap. By studying art, we're able to view the world from a different perspective, and it causes us to take action. As you can see, literature and the arts are not only meant for entertaining, they serve a much deeper purpose. The humanities broaden the human horizon by abolishing ethnocentric points of view through the analyzation of foreign and historic cultures. Taking these qualities from the classroom to the real world not only enrich the workforce, but society as a whole. We would like to leave you today with this quote. Lee y conducirás, no leas y serás conducido. Read and you will lead. Do not read and you will be led. Gracias. Gracias.